and welcome to CCTEC uh, online training. In this training, I am going to explain you uh, one aspect of CFD which is nothing but uh, pre-processing. Uh, uh, CFD is known as a three-step process in which there will be a pre-processing where we create the geometry and mesh the geometry. There will be a solution where we will solve the governing equations by using finite volume method. And the third process will be the post processing where we'll visualize the data so in this lecture i'm going to focus on the first aspect of cfd which is nothing but pre-processing and i'm going to introduce you uh, one pre-processing tool which is available which is nothing but gambit which is from ansys fluent and in fact in this lecture we are going to have a look at the guf gambit how to work with guf gambit what are the mouse operations and where the buttons are located so let's start so Gambit is geometry and mesh building, building intelligent toolkit. It is a single integrated preprocessor for CFD analysis. Uh, what do I mean by single integrated preprocessor in the sense you can create the geometry which is the first step in CFD analysis uh, creating the fluid domain or a solid domain for heat transfer analysis. So you can create the geometry in Gambit. Uh, there are two ways in fact for creating a geometry in Gambit. The second step is you can mesh the geometry, it means you can divide the domain into small small parts using simple uh, shapes like tetrahedra, hexahedra if it is 3D or if it is 2D it is triangle or quadrilateral. Once the mesh is created we can apply boundary conditions as per our requirements and we can export that mesh for our simulation. So there are two ways of as I said uh, creating geometry in Gambit. One is Gambit has provided the geometry modeling capabilities like you can create uh, moderately complex geometries in Gambit but uh, the geometry modeling capabilities in fact are not that great as we have seen in any standard CAD software so we can use Gambit for creating uh, simple geometries but if the geometries are complex like if you are talking about a flow or a car where the surface geometry of the car is very complicated using gambit will take lot of time to create those kind of geometries but uh, what we can do is in that case we can use a standard CAD software like uh, ProE, CATIA, SOLIDWORKS or something and once the geometry is created in those CAD softwares we can export that geometry into a standard file formats which are uh, which uh, which will be acceptable by gambit so those standard file formats like uh, are step parasolid and igs i will talk about uh, the import and import capabilities and what are the issues for different file formats in another lecture so the another you can say uh, method of taking geometry into gambit is you use a standard cad software you export that particular CAD model into a standard file formats which are state parasolid or IGS and then you use Gambit import capability to take that geometry into Gambit. Once the geometry is there in the Gambit then because of the import issues and all because of the data loss and all we have to repair the geometry and then uh, once the geometry is repaired it means once we have created the watertight volume then it is ready for meshing. Once the geometry is ready, we can create a structured or unstructured mesh by using Gambit. There are in fact very good meshing capabilities available in Gambit. So don't get confused with the structured mesh in Gambit and structured mesh in ICM CFD. They have a different philosophy. In fact, in ICM CFD, we use something called as multi-block uh, structured mesh functionality. Well, we, we will use blocking and all the stuff but in uh, gambit we can have a uh, structured mesh uh, you can say by using uh, schemes like map or submap we'll have a look at the uh, meshing schemes structured meshing schemes in gambit so once the gambit uh, once the geometry is finalized we can divide the geometry by using uh, different meshing capabilities available and the type of the elements typically created in gambit if you talk about 3d model the type of the mesh or the type of the uh, cells which will be created will be hexahedral, tetrahedral, pyramids and prisms. All these type of shapes are in fact supported by Fluent Solver. When the mesh is created, we have to examine the mesh. It means we have to check the quality of the mesh so that our solution will be good. So in fact there are different quality criteria uh, available in Gambit. We'll talk about it later. Once the quality is good, if we are happy with the mesh, then we have to apply or we have to create the zones for applying boundary conditions. 
because those zones will be visible in Fluent and it will be easy for creating a setup, uh, solution setup. So the last stage that you do in uh, Gambit is apply the boundary zones. Once everything is ready, we can take that mesh to different solvers and one of them is Fluent. So this is the general sequence of operation in Gambit. This is the initial step where you will select the solver. It means for which type of solver, which solver you are creating mesh. For example, are you creating a mesh for Fluent? Are you creating a mesh for Feed App or something like that? We have to select the solver because based on the solver, the type of elements will be selected. Once that is done, we have to also decide about what is the mesh size that we should have in the geometry. What is the type of clustering we should have in the geometry? Like this is nothing but a doing pre pre processing. It means with before starting the model itself, we should understand the problem and we should understand what type of mesh that we should look for. And in Gambit, there are something called as defaults, which are very strong. So those defaults will determine how your geometry will behave. The defaults will determine what will how your meshing will behave. We'll have a look at defaults later. Once the initial setup is done, once it means once you have decided about all these factors, then you have to create the geometry. As I said, you can use uh, geometry capabilities available in Gambit or you can uh, use the import facility available in Gambit. So create the full geometry and uh, the next step, which most of the time which we will do because most of the time we will be interested in hexahedral mesh in the volume. So what we do? we divide the geometry in a such a way that whatever the meshing capabilities or whatever the meshing algorithms are available like map sub map or cooper will decompose the geometry in a such a way that those kind of meshing schemes will be successful so the second step that we do after finalizing the geometry is decompose the geometry in meshable sections once that is done we go for meshing there are two meshing strategies generally used one is called as local meshing another is called as global meshing or in other way one is called as bottom to top meshing and other is called as top to bottom meshing in fact so what we do in bottom to top meshing is we start with the lowest order entity in this case it will be a age if you talk about meshing so we, we do a age meshing and then we go for a face meshing and then we go for a volume meshing so that we can have a better control on the mesh but you can always directly go for volume meshing where you define that okay this is the size of the mesh that I want in a volume so what it will do what gambit will do is it will also mesh the lower order entities like face and age with the same size that you have specified for a volume mesh and in fact in this case will not get a better control on the mesh once the mesh is done the next step that you do as I said is examine the mesh, check whether the mesh is proper or not, check the well, whether quality of the mesh is proper or not. Once that is done, assign the zone like continuum and boundary attachment. Continuum is nothing but in which region you will treat as a solid and which region you will treat as a fluid. Uh, like if you are interested in conjugate heat transfer for example like uh, heat exchanger problems and if you are modeling the thickness of the pipe, in that case we have to also model a solid domain. So we have to define which one is solid and which one is fluid and along with that we have to also specify which one is inlet and which one is outlet or which one will act as a wall or which one is will act as an interior which we have used only for decomposition of the geometry and all. So that is nothing but zone assignment. Once that is done we have to export the mesh and typically that is the um, like you will be exporting a mesh for fluent or CFX or something like that. The purpose of this particular presentation is to describe the general form of gambit startup command, the organizational structure of the files in the sense what kind of directories that gambit will create and the GUF gambit. <coughs> so this is the typical uh, icon that you see on the desktop once the gambit is installed successfully. You will see this kind of icon, this kind of uh, typical icon. So this is the icon that you will see. If you double click on this icon, then this uh, particular window will be opened. This particular window will be opened. And in this window, we have to specify particular things like what will be your working directory, what is your session ID, and what are the options that you are going to use. The working directory is nothing but where Gambit will store the files. Gambit will Gambit create some temporary files, which I'll talk about it later. So you have to select which is your working directory. Session ID is like it's a it's like a project name. For example, if I am uh, using a MS Office, let's say uh, 
word ms word then you give provide some name to the file so this session id is same as the name to the file but this name is common for all the files which will be there there are three files which are associated with gambit and these options are nothing but if you are interested in running gambit with some options which i will talk uh, about it then you have to give this option somewhere here and once you say run gambit will open now these are the options these are the typical options which are available in gambit uh, the most important option is like uh, generally which will be needed if you want to do this automatic processes for example um, init this is nothing but this particular uh, option will read in the journal file journal file is nothing but a, a command file for gambit and it will do all the process uh, automatically by reading the commands in the journal file it will do uh, the process automatically so this is one of the option uh, for gambit so if i want to do this then in that option form in the option uh, uh, for option here i have to specify that minus init and what is the journal file name right i will i will talk about the journal file use and uh, what do i mean by automatic process and all later so these are some of the options these are the typical files or directories which are associated with gambit when we call it as a home directory or there is called a source directory there is something called a scratch directory and working directory you need not to worry about all these directories the one thing that you have to worry about is the working directory and how it works and what is the use of the working directory it means whenever i start gambit what gambit does is gambit creates one temporary directory where there will be Uh, files which will be saved automatically it means if there is if something goes wrong or if gambit is crashing or let's say there is a power off or something like that you what you can do is you can actually retrieve back what you have done i mean you will not lose the data so what gambit does is in working directory gambit puts the temporary files three files are there in fact which is dbs jou and trn it puts those temporary files in the working directory whenever user specifies a command like save let's say i want to save the files then what it does is whatever the files which are there in a working directory which is a temporary directory it copies that file into a parent directory which we call it as a home directory so working directory is a sub directory of a home directory for example let me start gambit for example this is the gui of gambit and i have started my working directory is i guess let me see what is my working directory okay fine let's start gambit once more this is as i said this is the gambit icon if you see this is the working directory which i am selecting let's say document and setting administrator this is my working directory i'll say run now if you go to this particular directory document and setting and administrator that is actually my home directory so let's go to this particular directory so c drive document and settings administrator if you see this is my working directory and it has created one this is my home directory in fact and it has created one working directory the working directory name is always gambit something so i'll talk about it uh, <coughs> so this is the name of the working directory in a home directory there will be a working directory which is a temporary directory whose name always starts with gambit so if you go to this particular directory you will see that there are different names for example this name this starts with gambit let me see which is my working yeah i guess uh, this is my working directory so the name of the working directory is gambit dot some number is there and this number is nothing but the process id of uh, the process i mean whenever you start a gambit gambit is nothing but one process so this is nothing but the number of uh, process id of uh, that particular process in that directory if you see there are three files one is default id 2424.dbs 
jou and trn these are the three files which are associated with gambit so once i execute a command let's say save file save now you will notice that all these th three files are copied into a home directory if you see default id 2424 and these are permanently available on your hard disk now if i exit gambit for example if i exit gambit now if you notice what happens is it deletes that working directory it means it automatically deletes the working directory working directory in fact is a temporary directory it means it is not a permanent directory whenever you exit gambit successfully it deletes the working directory now if you have not executed a command called as save then what will happen the files which are there in the working directory they will be also deleted so before exiting gambit you have to save the file so that the files will be copied permanently in the uh, home directory so this is about i mean don't get confused with this working directory and home directory just remember that there is one directory called as working directory whose name will be gambit dot something and in that it will automatically store the files whenever you give execute a command save it will permanently store the files into your parent directory that is what uh, the concept is along with that you have to also worry about one file which is there which is nothing but <coughs> a lock file so what lock file does is let's say i will start again gambit i will start gambit if you go here you see it has created one working directory which is gambit 3028 it has created a working directory which is gambit 3028 and along with that if you see here it has created one lock file which is nothing but default id 3072 lock so default id is nothing but the session id of this number default id 3072 and it has created a lock what the use of this lock file is gambit will not allow any other user to open same file at the same time same file in the sense that file has to be on the same computer that is the first thing the file has to be uh, in the same directory that is the second thing and uh, it has to be i mean the file need to be accessed at the same time that is nothing but the conflict that we call it as a conflict so what gambit does is through this lock file it will not allow user to open the same file at same time it means it will not allow two users to do a changes on the same file at the same time so whenever this lock file is there it will always create this whenever you open a gambit it will always create this lock file and this lock file will actually prevent a user to open a file sometimes this is useful and sometimes it will it is problematic let's say i have saved this file for example i'll say this file save as um, i'll say it something like let's say i want to do a pipe simulation so file save as pipe i saved this file so if you go here there is something called as pipe.jou pipe.trn and pipe.lock now if something happens wrong what will happen this log file will be there this log file will not be deleted it will be always there now let's say gambit is terminating i mean it is uh, i mean uh, there is a power off or something what will happen this log file will be always there next time i cannot open this dbs file because there is a log file it means gambit will understand that somebody has already opened it which is not the case it is understanding it because there is a log file so what we have to do is we have to delete this log file and then and then only we can open this dbs so this is another case where i mean we need to be careful about you know deleting the log file but if you are exiting gambit normally for example if i exit gambit then if you see automatically this log file will be removed that log file is removed again that temporary directory is removed so that is the concept so these are the you know the directory uh, this is something about the directory and the log file fine so b now there are three files which are associated with gambit uh, every software in fact has some files associated with that for uh, ms word if you remember i mean the file which is associated with the doc file if you talk about notepad the notepad file associated is a text file txt file so similarly uh, for a gambit there are some files associated with that there are typical file formats and there is a typical data stored in those files so there are three files one is dbs file which is nothing but a database file 
in database file everything will be stored in the sense the geometry will be stored all the geometrical information will be stored all the mesh information will be stored in dbs file all boundary condition information will be stored in dbs file so everything is there in a dbs file so if you have only dbs file that will be also sufficient to start your new session in the sense to work on that particular geometry another two files which are there which are very useful the another file is a jou file which we call it as a journal file in journal file what gambit does it it stores all the commands which are which have executed by a user it means if i am creating a model let's say i have created a cube i want to create a cube now you can create a cube by using gambit gui now whenever i create a cube internally what gambit does is gambit executes one command so that command will be actually stored in that particular jou file and next time if i want to create a same cube then what i can do is rather than using gui i can go to journal file copy that command and then paste a command and execute the command that is what i can do so that is the use of journal file in fact it's a very strong functionality available in gambit so in journal file what is stored in journal file all the commands which are executed by gambit will be stored in a journal file in trn file there is something called as transcript window which i will introduce you when we'll have a look at the uh, gambit gui in transcript file all the things which are displayed by gambit it will display all the messages related to okay volume is created mesh is created these many elements are there and all that will be displayed in a transcript window and what gambit does is gambit stores all this automatically in one file called as trn file so if you want to have i mean let's say you have done uh, you are going for a direct volume meshing and you have defined some size and let's say volume meshing is uh, let's say volume meshing is failing so what we have to do is it might be failing because there is one phase which is not meshed successfully so what we can do we can go and open a trn file and we can have a look at what is the name of the phase which is not meshed so that we can go back and have a look at that phase independently and define some different meshing criteria or meshing strategies for the same so the use of trn file is to know what gambit is doing what are the messages which are displayed by gambit that is the use of trn file so there are three files associated with uh, gambit this is about you know if you are going to copy the files from one location to another location what happens so i hope that you are clear about the working directory and the files associated with gambit now let's have a look at the gui of gambit uh, in fact we'll see in detail the journal file because that is the most important file i believe in gambit where we can use it for automatic uh, grid generation and geometry or parametric modeling in fact so let's have a look at the gui of uh, gambit so this is the typical uh, you can say gui of gambit there is something called as a menu bar here there is something called as menu menu bar here this is menu bar then uh, in the menu bar there will be file edit solver which will have a look at it there is something called as a graphics window if you see this this is called as a graphics window there is something called as operation tool pad in graphics window definitely i mean what will happen is whatever you want to display like you want to display a uh, um, let's say a model or the mesh or the quality of the mesh that will be displayed in the graphics window this is called as operation tool pad in operation tool pad there are different different operations that we can do and they are also arranged sequentially the way we will be executing uh, project in gambit like the first one is create geometry the second one is create mesh the third one is apply boundary condition and these are nothing but a separate tools if you want to use some advanced tools you can use it so this is called as operation tool pad this is called as the global control tool pad what it will do is it will control the way the model is displayed in the graphics window that is what it will control so this is called as global control tool pad this is the description window and this is the most important window if you are a, um, um, a beginner uh, in gambit so this description window will tell you the description of each and every button if you point your button or if you point mouse on a particular button it will display what is the function of that button this is what i was talking about this transcript window in which gambit will display all the messages like what it is doing and what is going wrong and all now this is called as a command prompt i guess if somebody has used atocad or any other cad software 
most of them have a command prompt so this is the command prompt of gambit it means whatever i do here let's say i am creating a cube i can always create a cube by typing a command which will create a cube here so this is called as a command prompt of uh, gambit now let's have a look at uh, gambit so as i said this is the gif gambit this is called as a menu bar in that there is a file menu in that there is a edit menu in that there is a solver menu this is called as a graphics window the use of the graphics window is to display the model the way the model will be displayed or to display the mesh and all this is called as a graphics window this is called as operation toolpad which will expand if you click on it which it will expand so this is called as a geometry tool this is called as a meshing tool this is called as a boundary condition or zone assignment tool and these are the different tools which are available so in geometry if you click on again in geometry it will expand and it, it, it will show you different entities how to create different entities like uh, there is a vertex creation age creation face creation and volume creation and in fact there is something called as group creation also now again if you go to meshing there is something called as age mesh there is something called as face mesh there is something called as volume mesh so this is the way it will work if you click on it it will expand and as i was talking about if you are a beginner of gambit now you just point your mouse somewhere on the button let's say this is the geometry button and if you have a look at this it will display that what this button does for example right now it is displaying geometry command button opens toolpad that allows you to create and modify the model if i click here and if i let's say i am pointing my mouse on the vertex it says vertex command button opens a sub pad related to operations involving vertices something like that so if you are a beginner then uh, this uh, description window will help you out to know what exactly that button does in fact right now it is showing me description window displays the message describing it it, it, it gives the description about itself fine so uh, this is the global control tool pad which will decide how the model is displayed in the graphics window for example right now i can have a look at the front view or i can have a look at the isometric view or i can have a look at the shaded form of it or i can have a look at um, what i can change the Mm, lighting and all something like so this is the global control toolpad this is what the transcript window is which will display what is the uh, thing which is done by gambit so right now i can always expand this which is something like this now if you see it also says that volume create brick with 10 this is nothing but the command associated with creating brick now it will also display that created volume volume dot one volume dot one is the label of the volume then i have shaded I have, uh, wireframe and all so this is nothing but gambit and uh, this is the command prompt as i said of gambit where what i can do is i can uh, i can type some command which is associated with uh, you know creating some geometry and uh, meshing some geometry and actually i can create uh, whatever the operation which are done by this gui so that is uh, this is some brief about the gambit gui let's have a look at the components in detail so the first is the graphics window this is nothing but the graphics window by default the graphics window is divided into four quadrants and by default the upper right corner sorry upper left corner will be displayed to you what you can do is you can actually change your view into four quadrants for example there is something called as chassis there, there, there will be a vertical and horizontal chassis so if you click on this the second line if you remember i mean this is the second line if you click on this and if you drag your uh, model will be like this is nothing but the first quadrant this is the first quadrant this is the second quadrant again there is one horizontal chassis if i click and drag somewhere something like this now this is the first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant you can take in in that way now i can always rescale it by just clicking on this is called a chassis anchor if i take this you can actually have a look at this this is this is nothing but the sachet and sachet the use of the sachet anchor most of the time if this is this is useful if user want to have a different views of the model at a time that is why uh, these things are designed now if you right click on this 
now there are certain configurations already available the default configurations it means let's say i want to have a look at the upper left quadrant if i click on that there will be upper left quadrant or it means how how i can activate that just right click on that keep on pressing the right click and go to the uh, configuration that you want for example i want 4 so i'll say 4 so this is nothing but the default configurations which you are av uh, which are available which you can use in fact uh, the one interesting thing is like let's say user is interested in having a look at the model in a particular way which is not a standard way so for example if i want to have a look at the model in this way if i want to have a look at the model in this way this way and this way this is a particular way in which he is interested in what i can do is i can actually store these views in registry so if you see there are two registries available again if i right click on this there is something called as one and two so what you do you set your views in a particular way now right click on this sasha anchor and go and say set view one now uh, whatever i do let's say i'm doing something like this and this and i want to go back to the view which i'm interested in then i can say one if you see it is the same view that uh, which we have started with so this is the registry that you can put and um, i mean these are not very strong functionalities in fact i mean don't waste time on knowing these things but yes they are there which you can use i mean um, for your own uh, comfort so this is uh, something about the graphics window so this is what the graphics window says that it has a quadrant it has sachet it has sachet anchor quadrants there are four quadrants one two or four can be displayed simultaneously each quadrant can be customized to create the distinct representation of the current model default graphics window configuration displays only the upper left quadrant that is what i said each quadrant possesses a set of orientation axis what do i mean by that this is nothing but this is the orientation axis which will tell you what is the orientation of your model if you see there is also orientation axis here also there is a orientation axis here also there is a orientation axis so this orientation axis will tell you what is the orientation of your model it means if the model is very large something like this i really don't know what is the orientation of it so what i can do i, I can have a look at this i guess this is something like isometric view right the orientation these these three quadrant or whatever the axis this is not the origin so don't get confused with that this is actually the orientation of the model origin is somewhere here origin is something like this which is nothing but this this is the origin of the model so don't get confused with the orientation and don't get confused with the origin of the model so that is nothing but um, each quadrant possesses a set of orientation axis and it's a lower left quadrant indicating the global orientation uh, quadrants are separated by chassis, one horizontal, one vertical, chassis appears thin grey line, there is nothing but this, there is nothing but a chassis which occurs as a three thin grey line somewhere here, so these are the thin grey line, there is one vertical and there is one horizontal, fine, by default chassis are located at the bottom right side of the graphics window to resize the dimension, left click and drag it or something like that, I guess you know this. This is the Shasha anchor which you can click and you can resize the window into four windows at a time, something like that. So there are some default views you can set. So fine. So let's go to a file menu. What file menu does is now I want to have only left, uh, you know, upper left quadrant. So if you go to file window, these are the standard things. If you go to any, uh, you know, Windows software or anything, there is something called as new which will open a new session there is something called as open which will open an existing session there is something called as save which will save the existing se session with the name which you have provided same name if you say save as it will allow you to save the session with some different name with some different name now there is something called as print graphics what print graphics will do is like let, let, let's say you have created the geometry and you want to create the report you want to put this view into your geometry so what you can do you can actually pr print it into a file different type of uh, you know uh, file formats are available like tiff is there then eps is there eps is there then tiff is there ps is there eps is there and all so tiff is nothing but on windows you can use that so what it will do, will do is it will print the graphics into this particular uh, file and you can put it in a report in fact I actually I don't use this what I use maybe a print screen or maybe uh, some uh, free tools which are available which are like MW snap or something like that I generally use that but 
Gambit can also print the graphics or it can also store the image into one particular file which you can put into a report. These are the two uh, buttons, strong buttons which are nothing but run journal and clean journal. As I said journal file is nothing but a file in which the commands will be stored. So what you can do is you can actually use that file for doing the same thing that you have done previously. So what I can do is I can say run journal. I will browse that journal file in which the commands will be stored and when I say accept everything will be done automatically. I will, I will, uh, I will give the explanation about this later journal file. In journal file sometimes there is some junk data available like if you do some undo redo commands that will be also stored in the journal file. So we don't want uh, actually they are not uh, executable commands or something. So what I can do is actually I can clean the journal. So if I go to clean journal it will ask you what you want to remove. Remove the comments, remove the error commands, remove save commands, remove parameter commands and all. So I can clean the journal and that clean journal I can use it for you know creating the same geometry or doing the same process. So this is about clean journal view file is nothing but it will allow you to view the file i mean in fact this is generally used for looking at the journal file so i can browse a particular journal file and i can view that particular journal file for example this so if you see this is the typical journal file so i can view that typical journal file and so this is to view the journal file this is nothing but import if you have created a CAD uh, model into some other CAD software, you can actually import that CAD in so model into Gambit by using these type of file formats. So there is ASCII support, Parasolid, IGS tape, direct support for CATIA v4 file, direct support for CATIA v5 files. Then ICM input is something like um, you know a formatted point data, something like that. Vertex data is it means if you have stored the data, uh, it means the coordinate of vertices into one particular text file you can directly create thousand vertices at the time something like that mesh is nothing but you can import the mesh and all so this is something about import i will talk about it later export is nothing but you can also export the geometry which is created in gambit for other purposes for example you can take it into uh, other pre-processing tool like icm or the most important is like export mesh which is this export mesh will allow you to export a mesh for fluent so that is what it will do and reconnect CAD is nothing but I mean you can refer to a parent CAD geometries and all and this is exit this is about a file menu now there is something called as edit menu title means you can you know change the title of your project or you can put a title on all the images file is nothing but it will open the file into uh, a one editor where you can change some things like generally used for changing the parameters in uh, journal file so you can do that parameter is nothing but this is generally used for parametric modeling it means if I have a cylinder I can define that my cylinder is parameterized by using the radius of the cylinder and the length of the cylinder so I can change in runtime I can change the radius and, and the length and I can I can create different different cylinders with different size so that is nothing but a parametric modeling we'll have a look at it later this is just the introduction to the geo of gambit this is nothing but default which I was talking about which we, which are very strong so there are different type of defaults there are graphics defaults file input output defaults there is a meshing defaults there is global default there is a label default and all so these are nothing but defaults and this is undo and redo which are also accessible if you see here global control toolpad there are undo and redo so this is about edit solver is nothing but if you are aware of for which type of solver you want to create a mesh these type of solvers are supported in fact you uh, in gambit so if you are interested i if you uh, if you are aware of which type of solver that you are going to use for solution then you can select the solver here so most of the time i guess we'll be interested in fluent 56 or something or maybe um, ansys or i don't know flow wizard or something so here you have to select the solver the solver selection will actually restrict the type of the meshing schemes which are available some operations in fact for example if i go to meshing and if i go to volume mesh if you see you can actually create different type of hexahedras like you can create 8 noted hexahedra 20 noted hexahedra 27 noted hexahedra so if i select if i select for example fluent 56 
which is a CFD finite volume solver in that we will not look for you know um, 20 noded uh, hexahedral 27 noded hexahedral generally these are used these are called as higher order elements they are used for finite element methods and in fluent generally finite volume method is used so what it will do is if you have selected fluent solver then it will restrict you to create those kind of volumes and another case is it will also restrict you to export those kind of mesh because anyway fluent is not going to understand 20 noded hexahedra so that is what the effect of the selecting solver is so this is what i was talking about the file menu in which uh, you can open the new file or you can uh, uh, open a new session or open existing session and this is import export facilities which are there in gambit then this is uh, the edit menu facility which is there in uh, gambit where you can uh, you know define some parameters or change some defaults and do undo redo operations this is the solver menu where you have to select the different solvers and these are the other components of the GUI which are nothing but a transcript window the description window and the command line which are nothing but this is the transcript window this is the crumb this is the command prompt where I can type the command and this is the and this is the description window so uh, the transcript window I guess you can um, e you know expand the transcript window in two ways if you click on this second gray line and if you drag you can expand the transcript window similarly you can expand this view also because sometimes uh, some some things are not visible so you can expand this view in this way also and you can type the command or for transcript window you can click on this arrow it will display the transcript window and again if you click on this arrow it will again the original it will go to the original position or the size Fine. so this is about um, the other components which are there this is something like uh, the control element GUI control elements there are something called as command button option button radio button check boxes and all um, I mean you will come across these kind of things uh, regularly if you are using gambit then there is something called as list box text window pick list form I will tell you I mean uh, we'll explore the GUI later query list or slider bar which are there and uh, command buttons and all so let's have a look at the other components of the GUI which are a global control toolpad or operation operation toolpad so as I said this is the global control this is the global control toolpad this is the global tool control toolpad so there are geometry buttons there are um, meshing buttons and there is a boundary condition button so if you go to geometry button now there is a vertex button there is age button there is a face button and volume button if you have a look at the button itself if you see there is only one point so it is something to do with the vertices there is a age it means something to do with the age there is a face it means it is something to do with the face and it is something to do with the volume now if i click on the vertices now it will open again one more tool pad which will talk about all the operations on the vertices for example the first button is create vertices so there are different ways by which you can create the vertices which we will talk about it in uh, uh, you know geometry um, build how we can build the geometry in Gambit. in that lecture we'll talk about it so this is create vertice vertices slide virtual vertex then connect reconnect operation change the color and all move copy operations then um, uh, create non-real to convert non-real to real vertices because there are two type of geometries in Gambit then summarize the vertices and delete the vertices now if you see typically in gambit gui if you see the button which is something like this and if there is a downward triangle or downward arrow on any button it means there are some hidden options available it means right now you can create a vertex by giving coordinates but there are other options also for creating vertices so if you want to see other options you have to right click on that if I right click on that it will open other options which are there for example you can create vertex on a edge or on a face or on a volume or at interest intersection of two edges and all so if I want to use the option of uh, creating vertices at the intersection I will click here then that particular form will be open which will ask me 
two edges and it will create the vertices at the intersection of the two edges so the point is like whenever you see a button where there is a downward arrow it means there are some hidden options available for example in this case also there are some hidden options because i see there is a downward arrow so if i right click on that then it will open all the other options which are there so summarize check query and total so similarly if you go here there is something called as undo and there is one hidden option which is nothing but redo so this is the redo option so if you want to open the hidden options uh, in a case where there is a downward arrow there will be hidden options so you can right click on that and you can have a look at the hidden options so this is one thing that is there similarly if you go to global control toolpad as i said global control toolpad controls the way the geometry is displayed in the graphics window now uh, we have seen that uh, the graphics window is divided into four quadrants which are something like this if i want to activate four quadrants i will go here four quadrants this activate will control which quadrant will be active right now everything is red it means all the quadrants are active so i will deactivate let's say three quadrants only upper left quadrant is active it means i cannot do anything if i want to rotate or something that is not applicable here only i can rotate the model so that is nothing but activating the quadrants so if i say all it means in all the quadrants i can do some operations but if you see in all the quadrants it means that uh, for example i mean uh, if you split the geometry the geometry will be also split it is only the view that you are controlling not the geometrical operations it means all other quadrants also display the same geometry so whatever the geometrical operations that you do or maybe meshing operations that you will do that will be also applicable for these views but only thing is these views are not active that is nothing but you can control the quadrant views as i said global control toolpad is nothing to do with the geometry and the operations on the geometry everything is in operation uh, toolpad so global control toolpad only controls the way it is going to be viewed fine so let's have a look at the global control toolpad because it's a general we need not to have a idea of geometry before this because we have to we, we are just controlling how the things are visible in the graphics window fine so the first button if you see that is nothing but fit to screen or fit to window it is also called as fit to window it means if i do something like this if my model is somewhere here if i click on this button it will be in a current orientation it will be fitted in on the in the graphics window so this is nothing but fit to window it is a standard you can say uh, function uh, that is also available in other cad software also this is nothing but the second button is nothing but the rotate pivot for rotate in fact right now if i rotate the geometry it is rotated about the centroid of this particular geometry but if i activate if i click on this now wherever i am clicking that will be actually the uh, you know centroid for rotation so again if i click uh, the center will be activated the centroid will be activated the orientation or rotation will be done about the centroid if i again click on this the orientation or the uh, rotation will be done where i am clicking so this is nothing but pivot for rotation now these are some default views available in the sense like four window if you have a look at it uh, it's like y view perpendicular to y perpendicular to z and perpendicular to x and isometric so if i click on this by default all the four views will be shown to me so this is like perpendicular to y perpendicular to z perpendicular to x and this is isometric so there are default views available again there if you see there is a downward arrow so if i right click different views will be there so if i click on this there will be four it means four quadrant will be displayed and again the isometric view of the model will be displayed in the four quadrant for example if i click here only upper left will be active and isometric view or maybe another view so these are the default configurations which are available this is nothing but the way the lighting will be there if i shade this you can imagine that the shading is nothing but i am throwing particular color light on this model from a particular distance so you can always control which lights are on and which lights are off for example right now if you see black light is on white light is on and again this uh, i guess cyan color or whatever uh, this is also on so what i can do again i can activate this red color right so you can imagine okay i will say on again a blue color light is also on or maybe a yellow color light is also on so i can always do that you imagine that your model is um, you know uh, kept in a sphere 
and a different location of the spheres the uh, different color lights are thrown on the model so you can always control the way the model will be rendered or shaded so this is this i mean this is not a very strong functionality generally i don't know i mean if we are, we are going to use it but it's there so what you can do is you can also control from where the light will be thrown the location of the bulb in fact so if you click on particular bulb and if you drag the orientation on the globe can be changed right so this is the uh, way the lights will be thrown from the distance now there is something called as ambient and distance it means what is the location of your bulb i mean how far that bulb is from your particular model so now uh, distance is nothing but it is too far and ambient is nothing but it is close to the model something like that so reset will take you to the default which is a very you can say a strong uh, function because if you do something wrong you really don't know what you have done wrong so reset is reset will take you to a default thing so this is nothing but the changing color uh, or shaded uh, form of your model if you right click on this there is something called as annotations annotation is nothing but if you again want to print it then you can add uh, some annotations like i can add a arrow of red color the width of that is uh, one and then i can add a arrow which is something like this and which will tell me that okay this is the inlet this is not geometrical entity this is just some annotations that you have added so that if you take a print graphics this arrow will be there which will display that which one is inlet which one is outlet and all so you can add a different type of annotations like arrow line and you can also add a text let's say this is inlet and if i say this is inlet of size let's say 7 so i can always add this as an inlet something like that so these annotations will be useful if you want to use a print graphics function of um, gambit but generally i don't prefer this what i do is i take the image i'll put it in a ppt and then there i'll apply some boundary conditions as by my as per my requirement so i can also delete all the annotations if you go to delete all everything will be deleted so this is nothing but annotation the third button which is there which is nothing but label so label is nothing but there is display attribute button which is here which i will explain later now whenever in display attribute if you are going to activate the label it means if you want to see the label of the entities what kind of labels will be displayed so there are like regular labels like the face name and all what is his name age name or their um, uh, you can say uh, the regular labels basically or boundary layer label uh, but if I want to, uh, you know, say display uh, which type of meshing scheme is applicable for that face, I will activate scheme. What type of, um, what is the interval size which is used for meshing? What is the, I mean, what is the label of the boundary layer? What is the sizing function? Boundary type, boundary condition type, continuum type. I will activate that. I will say apply, and then in display attribute, I can say activate the labels. So I will say activate label, apply. If you see, all the labels are displayed somewhere here. So what type of labels will be displayed is based on what type of labels are activated here. So right now I have activated all, but now I will say regular apply if you see only regular labels are which are nothing but the labels of the entity which will be active. So this is nothing but the label what type of labels it, it means if you want to have a look at what type of boundary condition you have applied with what interval size you have meshed particular entity and all. So you can choose the particular type of label here and you can activate that fine so the next button is undo redo if i want to undo some operations which are which i feel which are wrong then what i can do is i will say undo and redo now by default in gambit there are 10 undo and redos which are possible it means recently 10 task you can undo or recently 10 undo you can redo but you can always change that it, it means that if you are aware of that i might make lot of mistakes and if i want to change uh, let's say i want to have 100 undo redos you can always do that there is one default if you go to defaults and if you go to global default and if you say undo now if i change it to 100 i can always do it i can change it to 100 i will say modify now hence after if i am going to do 100 wrong operations i can always revert back to the original uh, model but uh, these are quite like because all the undo redo operations somewhere you have to it, it has to store it in a registry 
so uh, this will be a uh, you can say it will take a lot of memory and all so computationally they are expensive so you have to make sure that uh, the undo operations that you are going to put and the memory that you have is uh, quite okay so uh, the point is like you can always change the number of undos and redos that you want to do but you have to do it before starting any operation in gambit then and then only those many undo and redos are available fine so this is undo redo operation this this button is nothing but the orientation of the model so right now i can have a look at the isometric view because if you see there is isometric view so again if i see there is one downward arrow so if i right click on that these are the different views that you can see so there is a positive x view negative x view positive y view and all so these are nothing but if you want to have orientations or if you want to orient your model in a graphics window in a particular way then you can always do that by using these buttons fine so this is the display attribute as i said which is a very strong tool again in gambit which will allow you to have a look at only particular type of entities it means you can have a look at only edges and you can uh, make uh, faces and volumes invisible or you can have a look at um, uh, only a particular face and a mesh on that particular face so that if 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 the face meshing is uh, problematic or if the quality is not good you can actually examine only a single face and a mesh on that so that you can define your own strategies for the meshing that face so this is nothing but a display attribute for example let's say i want to make all volumes of what I'll do, I'll say all volumes, all volumes, and I'll say visibility off. So all the volumes are moved from the graphics window. Now, if I want to have only look at the faces, I'll say all the faces should be on. I'll say apply, so all the faces are on. Or if I want to have a look at only vertices, again I'll say all faces off, and all vertices should be on. So if you see, uh, I will have a look at only the vertices. So this is nothing but you can control the view of a particular entities in a graphics window through this display attributes fine uh, i guess uh, down the line uh, we'll have a look at it when we'll see some uh, do some tutorials and all fine so this is nothing but display attribute this is the three views that you can have a look at when is wireframe other is shaded and the third is hidden hidden it is also hidden here so now let me activate the volume on apply now you, i can have a look at the wireframe I can have a look at the shaded form of it or I can have a look at the hidden it means hidden line I mean hidden lines will not be displayed only the front portion of the thing will be displayed so this is nothing but the three views that you can have Fine. this is again a very strong tool in gambit which is nothing but coloring entities it means whatever the geometry which is there in gambit they have assigned some color to that it means if there is a volume then that volume edges will be displayed in green color if there is only a faces then that face will be displayed in um, i guess a cyan color let's have a look at it volume off all volumes off all faces on yeah it is cyan color and the edges will be displayed in yellow color fine i mean we'll talk about it uh, later like uh, when we'll see uh, the entity coloring and uh, cleanup operation generally they are useful in this so this is nothing but color by entity and color by connectivity so these are the two things which are there in gambit Fine. so this the last button which is there that is nothing but examine mesh it means if you have created a mesh in gambit you can actually examine that mesh for as per your uh, criteria it means let's say I create the volume mesh in this particular volume definitely I can create all hexahedral it looks very simple volume now I can actually examine this mesh by using this button let's say I'll click on this and then I'll say okay I want to have a plain cut and I want to look for a hexahedral element so I'll say update if you see you can have a look at the hexahedral elements if I slide this bar a different different sections it will show me what is the type of mesh which is created or i can take a section which is perpendicular to y or i can take a section which is perpendicular to x so there is something called as uh, a plane cutting plane or spherical cutting plane or you can also have a look at the uh, elements 
in a particular range in the range in the sense uh, the, the worst to the best element in the volume so you can have a look at it uh, we'll talk about this once we'll see the meshing operations in gambit so the last button which is there that is nothing but the examine mesh form so this is the examine mesh form so as i said uh, uh, the downward arrow you have to have a look at other options also which you can do always then these these are some of the uh, operations uh, or some type of buttons which are there so they are quite uh, obvious and the meaning of them is quite obvious so it means if i go here if you see there is something called a square triangle or something like a square triangle here it means again there are hidden buttons it means I can create hex type of element as well as combination of hex and mesh and text. So whenever you see this kind of button in Gambit or this kind of symbol in Gambit, it means again there are some hidden buttons available. So that is the one thing that you have to notice. This is like a checkbox. If I activate or I can activate or deactivate this. This is like again a checkbox. And if you go to examine mesh form, there is something called as a slider bar. This is like a slider bar. So these are the components of uh, Gambit GUI. There are different type of coordinate systems. There are cylindrical coordinate systems, spherical coordinate system, and all. There are something called as radio buttons. I mean, it's quite understood. I mean, they are not difficult to um, uh, understand. Check boxes are there. Text boxes. Text boxes are nothing but where you have to put some text. You have to put some text. That is nothing but the text box. For example, if I create for example if i want to create this is nothing but the text box it means i can give the label of label to the entity this is called as text box so that is the text box fine this is a list box list box is this list box is nothing but um, you know you have to select the entities for example uh, you can do a selection of entities in two ways which i will talk uh, about it uh, one is like um, for example let's say i want to volume uh, or age, uh, uh, let's say um, I'll use one command reset mesh which will delete everything like everything in the sense all the meshing part now let's say I want to mesh the age only one particular age what I can do I can click on this it will open a pick list form and I can select this age I can drag it somewhere he here and then I can specify okay I want to have let's say uh, put, uh, let's say I want to have 20 elements on that I can say apply this is nothing but the pick list form this is typically called as a pick list form it is quite obvious you select the entities all the entities somewhere something like this you click on this arrow it will be picked and then you specify whatever you want to do or you can say all all things will be picked or you can say deselect all something like that so this is nothing but a typical pick list form but generally i don't use this generally i don't use this what i do is i go into something called as a pick mode which i'll explain you later and then I will select the entities and then I will say apply so that is generally I prefer which will make you a very strong user of uh, very strong user of uh, Gambit Fine. so this is what the pick list form is and I will I, I will I will introduce you uh, the pick mode of uh, Gambit so only thing is I will explain to you what is the pick list form and all this is the pick, typical pick list form where you have to select the entities click on the arrow it will be selected and then you can do some operations on those selected entities or you can deselect all you can select all or you can deselect the selected entities particular entity in fact so this is the summary of the typical form if you see this is the list pick list where you have to select some entities this is the radio button which you can activate or deactivate these are again the radio buttons this is like a checkbox this is the command button this is like option form if you see there is some uh, small you can say what um, uh, a square here it means there is again some options available this is the text box entries like in this case you have to provide the numerical values so that uh, uh, the this is the move copy form so this is nothing but a typical form fine now uh, this is the summary of uh, you can say this is the summary of the text box and the list box this is all about the GUF gambit uh, there is only one thing that we need to discuss like what is the mouse operations in gambit like uh, it's a standard operation as you see in other CAD softwares 
like the left click and drag is rotate the middle click and drag is nothing but pan and the right click and drag is uh, nothing but zoom in zoom out it can also do a rotate operation if you uh, drag it in a particular way uh, there is another mode which I said which is nothing but the peak mode if you want to select some entities you can go into peak mode for example let's say I want to mesh this particular edge so what I'll do is I can do that selection somewhere in the pick list form I can always do that selection but the best way of doing it is first is go into peak mode so how to do that is right click and then keep on pressing it and then left click you will go to a pick mode the arrow will be converted into this kind of thing uh, your mouse will be converted into this kind of symbol and now you can pick and then you can say either apply here or maybe you can say right click so that is nothing but apply now this is also pick mode if I want to select another entity for example if I want to go for a face mesh and now uh, basically you have to click on the boundaries for selecting uh, particular faces so if you click uh, on this face let's say I don't want to select this face but I want to select this face but if you see the boundary here is common so what I'll do is I'll do a middle click for next selection so I'll do a middle click for next selection so middle click is a next selection if you go into pick mode and then right click is apply so this is nothing but the pick mode if you want to go again back into a back back mode so this is about the pick mode uh, there is one more thing that uh, let's say I want to select all the edges which are coming in this range for example if I want to select the edges which are something like this again I can go into pick mode and I can select this in this way from top to bottom if I drag if we see the remaining edges are also selected can you see this these are the edges also which are selected but this is nothing but wherever that box is touching those edges will be selected wherever that box is touching those edges will be selected but now if I want to select particular uh, edges I'll just delete the mesh if I want to select particular edges then what I can do is I can actually do this I will select I will do from bottom to top drag then whatever the entities which are coming in that particular box or completely include enclosed entities will be selected so you can say apply so this is the selection operation so you see this is what I was talking about the pick mode bottom to top drag and top to bottom drag that is what the mouse button is and this is the typical uh, you can say the function like uh, action is drag left click xy rotation middle click translation and right click zoom uh, or rotate this is uh, pick mode left click is pick middle click is next and the right click is accept so this is what uh, the mouse operation is uh, we'll talk about all other like we'll explore uh, uh, geometry capabilities as well as meshing capabilities in gambit in lex lectures so this is all about the GU of gambit thanks